Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome and thanks for joining us for Mass today. It's very good that we pray together. This is the parish of St. Paul the Apostle in New York City, and I know Praying with us are many groups within our parish who watch from home, they watch together, and friends, cousins, relatives from around the country, friends of the Paulists joining us in prayer. Welcome. Brothers and sisters, we humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created which will be a reminder of our baptism. May God help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. We pray. Lord our God, in your mercy you are present to your people's prayers. And for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation, and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful, to refresh and cleanse us. You also made water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water, the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with us. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the river Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who are preparing for baptism through Christ our Lord. Amen. We now join in the angel song of praise.
God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase the grace you have given us that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font we have been washed, by whose spirit we have been reborn, by whose blood we have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exultation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. The response is, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love is everlasting. I was hard pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love is everlasting. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord, this has been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love is everlasting. From the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now, for a little while, you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that is perishable, even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him, you rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, my pierced side, O Thomas, and look upon my hands, my feet, not faithless, but believing be. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now, a week later, His disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The disciples are locked down. They're hiding out in the upper room because they're afraid. They're afraid that they're going to suffer the same fate as Jesus. Jesus comes to them. He says, peace be with you. Now they're astonished. Is this a ghost? What's going on? So he says to them again, peace be with you. He shows them his physicality. It's his, it's his body. He's not a ghost. He's really there. He's there for them. And then he breathes on them, gives them the great gift of the Holy Spirit. He promised at the Last Supper that he would give them a peace, a peace beyond all understanding, a peace not like the peace the world gives. And now Jesus fulfills that promise. He gives them the peace of the Holy Spirit, and that that peace brings them a joy, not a hilarity, but a deep serenity that they know God is with them. And then Jesus gives them his mission. He came to forgive sins. He came to show the divine mercy of God. This is Divine Mercy Sunday. He shares with them his ministry of forgiveness 
and reconciliation. And he sends them out and he says, forgive sins. And he gives them the power to do that through the Holy Spirit. Now, what about us? We're locked down. We're afraid. We've got this monster that's getting closer, this invisible virus. We're scared. Jesus comes to us. Jesus is with us now. He's saying the same thing. Peace be with you. And he's giving us the same gift, the Holy Spirit. And he's giving us the same mission to continue to be ministers of peace by extending forgiveness. Now, I don't know how long you've been locked down, and I don't know who you've got with you in your apartment or your house, but if there's somebody else there, you're probably getting on each other's nerves. We've got, what, there's 23 Paulists living here. I can guarantee you that at least one of them is getting on the nerves of somebody else. And so we have to practice this ministry of forgiveness if we're going to be able to live with each other. A while back, I, I did one of these destination weddings, and all the guests were staying in the same hotel. In the morning of the wedding, I went down to the restaurant and had breakfast with a, a married couple that I've known for quite a while. They're about my age. They've been married for some years. And so looking for material for my wedding homily, I said to them, I said, if you had any advice to give to a couple, what would the advice be? And the husband said, presume forgiveness. You have to presume that you're going to hurt your spouse's feelings and that your spouse is going to forgive you. And his wife stopped him. And she says, don't presume I'm going to forgive you. I wouldn't say it presumed forgiveness. I would say absolute forgiveness. I just have to commit myself to be forgiving. And we talked about this, and, and as we hashed it out, what does this really mean? The, the term I came up with was habitual forgiveness. We have to make it a habit to forgive because people are going to annoy us. They're going to hurt us. We're going to get angry. And we do not want to walk around with a head full of anger and a belly full of resentment. That is no way to be locked down. You don't want to start giving somebody the silent treatment if there's only two of you in the apartment. So what's the answer? Jesus told us. Forgive each other's sins. How do we do that? Sometimes it's hard. When somebody apologizes to us, it's relatively easy. But what if it's a chronic thing? There's just something they do that annoys you. Well, Jesus gave us the answer to that, too. Love your enemies, pray for your persecutors. The way you love your enemy, the way you forgive your enemy, is to pray for them. It's very difficult to hate somebody and simultaneously love them by praying for them. Because when you, when you pray for somebody, it's an act of love. Now, I know I don't want to walk around holding on to resentment. If you've heard me preach about this before, and maybe you have because I talk about it all the time, I've, I've said, and I, I didn't, it's not my line, I stole it, resentment is the poison I drink hoping you die. I'm walking around holding this resentment 
and it's just an acid that's eaten away inside of me. I got to let it go. And the way I let it go is to forgive. And the way I forgive is to pray for you. And I don't give God instructions telling him exactly what I want for you. I just ask God to bless you. I just ask God to make the best possible outcome for our relationship. I just hold you in love and ask God to bless you. And that's going to change my heart. And that's going to allow me to forgive. So we've got our homework. Think about the person you resent. Think about the person that's annoying you. And for the rest of this Mass, say a prayer for them. And I want to end with a poem that I wrote on this line from the Gospel, As the Father has sent me, so I send you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Light from light to light you are sent into a constant calling forth from fear until peace be with you is your atmosphere. Then comes the golden spiral that sends you spun into the gently pulsing web guided by the great light-footed weaver. You spend your life vibrating threads to mend torn and beleaguered lives with multiple strands of forgiveness. We join in our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue now in prayer for our needs, for the needs of the whole church and the whole world. For Pope Francis, all our church leaders and ministers, and for ourselves, that we will be good and faithful witnesses to the risen Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For government leaders to strengthen the common good, to lead with compassion and wisdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for our homeless neighbors, 
for those whose homes do not feel safe, that they may find protection and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We carry to you, Lord, people suffering from the COVID virus and for our sick family and friends. We pray for their healing and well-being. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we pray for all our nurses and healthcare workers, emergency personnel. Keep them safe and give them a strong sense of inner peace as they carry out their mission. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For Salvatore and Catherine Mazella, Wentz Reyes, Livio Jose Saltron, for whom this Mass is especially offered, and for all our beloved dead. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we pause to make our personal petitions, opening our hearts to God. And remember, if you're on Facebook, you can type in your intentions to share with all of us. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Father, with confidence in your mercy, we put all our needs before you in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Um, when we're all together in the church, this is the time when we take a collection. And the collection is important to keep on the lights and all those practical things for maintaining the church buildings. But there's something more about it. It's also an act of worship. During this time, if you still have an income, God bless you, please remember to make a contribution to St. Paul's or to your local parish. I think there's a link to that uh, online. Thank you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice we give us. The praise, praise and glory of God's name, our good and the good of all the church. Lord, accept 
the offering of your people and of those you have brought to new birth in baptism, that renewed by confession of your name and faith in Christ, we may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere to acclaim you. But especially on this Easter day, above all, to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death. By rising, he restores our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples. Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples. Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. You are the Savior of the world. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you hold us worthy to be here in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring us to the fullness of love together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, and all who serve in your name. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may come to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We pray for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the joyful coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and the glory are yours. Lord, Jesus Christ, on the night of the resurrection, you said to your friends, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you. We share a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold, the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not to my roof, only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, thank you for praying with us today. Uh, we also will be live streaming Mass uh, Monday through Friday at uh, 1210 noon. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go in peace to proclaim the gospel with our lives.